Welcome to Citizens Forum. This is being filmed on Wednesday, October the 16th in the beautiful Memorial Arena. The first part of Citizens Forum is always the Walter and Jack show and there's certainly a lot to talk about. Um, so Walter, I just want to start off with a story that was in the Times columnist just a few days ago um, on Sunday, October the 13th. You can see the headline. It says, Hydro says, foes of smart meters ring up costs and you know I'm very interested in media and I, I, I you know I, I have my own take on the way media operates and I think one of the media's jobs is in order to promote and allow the corporate agenda to constantly move forward one of the things they do is they pit citizens against each other and that's what this story in the Times columnist to me and I could be wrong but this is what it seems to be doing because what it's saying to everybody else is these people, for kind of no reason, are costing you millions of dollars. They use the, fil uh, the, the number 7 million and later on a figure of 12 million. And I don't know if that's a one-time cost. I mean, you know, they're talking millions of dollars. It's a yearly, what they think is a yearly cost. They're estimating that there's going to be 10,000 people that are going to eventually, uh, you know, be refusing these meters. Other people are estimating it to be more like 100,000. Now, if you did 100,000, uh, um, they're going to be pulling in $70 million a year. Their, their hydro yeah. is making 70. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's an old, old joke about how do you know when hydro's lying? Is their lips are moving. They, nothing they've ever said has been truthful and forthright ever before. It comes through filters of public relations departments and, and gurus and wizards, and nothing is straight with Hydro. They're always stringing a line. You can't trust them. You can, it, it's obvious you can't trust them, given all the things they've done in the past and their connections with liberal insiders and in many cases NDP insiders. Now we're talking kind of specifically about this smart meter issue. I, That's I right, hate to say that everything Hydro says is... Uh, well, actually, all around uh, the Runner River projects, all around their revenue stream, all around their contracts, the future contracts, this has all been wildly distorted, Jack, to the point where, yeah, you can't trust anything these guys are saying anymore. I and yet, don't. And yet, the Times columnist seems to trust them completely because they print all of this information as if it was fact. And it really bothers me that the media, and I don't want to pick on the Times columnists because they're no worse than any of the rest. All of them are terrible. All of our newspapers, all of our television, all of our radio, they're corporate owned and they put out the corporate message. And one of the things they do, besides misleading us and keeping us as uninformed as possible about the, about the important things that are going on in our world, one thing they do is they pit citizens against each other. And that's what I see this story doing. <coughs> because they're telling people that, you know, as, hydro, as, as the, everybody's hydro bills is going up, blame falls on the people who don't want smart meters. I mean, what a rotten, and especially because none of it's true. The whole project, the whole smart meters project is completely unnecessary. Absolutely correct. At a cost of a billion dollars to start with. And here the Times columnist dares to tell the people of this city, and I'm sure the other newspapers are doing it across the province, that somehow, you know, you want somebody to blame for your high, your high hydro bill? Blame the people who don't want smart meters. It's yeah, and I say just keep it up, Hydro, and keep it up, Liberals, because... And keep it up, Times Colonists, and all the media. Because the, the province, this is, this is I think, the, uh, the kind of like the perfect storm in politics. Things could really explode for these guys. People are sick and tired of, of these guys, and they're sick and tired of the Liberals. And in many cases, I hate to say it, but they're sick and tired of the NDP too, Jack. You know, because they simply are a bunch of milk toast politicians that have a certain learned sort of uh, helplessness, they seem they can't do anything other than going to Adrian Dix and John Horgan on this file, and those guys can't be trusted on this. Obviously, they, they have their own agendas. So, <coughs> yeah, you point out something really important that the TC just is promoting an agenda. You and know, the media in general is promoting yeah. an agenda. Um, 
I'll just read one more sentence from this story where they talk about, the, the Times columnist talks about there's a perceived negative health effects caused by wireless transmissions. Well, <coughs> it's funny they should say it's perceived because it's, it's not perceived as if we think there is but really there isn't. The science says there is. I don't think, in my mind, I think the science is that there is absolutely no question that this stuff is harmful. So why would the Times colonists choose to use a term like it's perceived? Well, because they're trying to hide the truth. Let's face it. You know, there's a researcher I know that has amassed 15,000 studies on radio frequency radiation and other types of radiation, but basically it's quite irrefutable that this is a very, very serious negative health effect that this type of radiation causes. And by the way, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which is the, <coughs> the agency that, that decides what is carcinogenic or not, has designated this type of radiation as carcinogenic. So is it their perception also? I mean, at some point, it's, you have to really laugh. Um, uh, just as an aside, uh, the, the GMO demonstrations were happened at the legislature um, uh, right, last past weekend. weekend. And I listened to the reports, and of course, good old CBC reported on it. And the last line in the in the report was, Health Canada t uh, states that there are no uh, negative health effects associated. There's no research that there's negative health effects associated with GMOs. Uh, and of course, it's because uh, the government does no research, and the only research they receive is from from the from the corporations. So we're really up against it here. These guys just lie daily. It's just a standard fare. It doesn't matter what the truth is or what reality is, Jack. They just, they just kind of go along with their line, and we're supposed to read this stuff and just sort of shrug. You know, it's it's ridiculous, is what it is. So this is the this is the very, this is the very dangerous situation we're in right now, which is that the corporations control, it seems, fully the media and the politicians <coughs> and it's like there's no place left to hide um, you know one story that's important right now they're talking about in BC going to Ireland and to hire hundreds of welders and tradesmen I guess for this uh, new all the new pipelines and and the natural gas this poisonous natural gas thing that they're doing in BC and the story is there's nobody in Canada that can do the job, so they have to go overseas. Now, you know a little bit about apprenticeships, so... Well, it ties into the apprenticeship program because, obviously, we should be training our own trades that could handle these projects and could be easily train our trades to do that. My son has just gone into, a, into, a, into the apprenticeship program, and, and, but we realized, number one, he had to wait for a year to get into Camosun. He had to pay $3,500 uh, to pay for his six-month tuition there. Uh, he has not, he's not eligible for any income assistance or unemployment insurance, even though he's worked for three years, by the way. Um, there's so if people can't afford it, they just, just can't do it. You, how are you going to, how can the average person who's trying to support themselves take six months off and to pay $3,000 in tuition? You have to take a loan out. And there's no guarantee you're going to get a job in this, in this trade at the other end. Uh, and on the other side of it, where there might be opportunities arising, the provincial government wants to bring in foreign workers, foreign, foreign trained workers. Well, these workers, by the way, have no rights. If they start not liking the health and safety conditions on the job site, the company can say, well, you're a troublemaker and we're shipping you out of here. There's no protection whatsoever for those workers. So it's perfect for them. They can bring in a bunch of workers that have no rights, they're going to have to accept everything they want to say. Oh, I'm sure the government and everybody's going to tell you it's not so, but that's the way it works everywhere else in the world. And uh, they're going to get cheap labor with, with uh, absolutely no union rights, nothing like that. These, these guys are just going to be coming in and doing this project and ship back home again. So, you know, it, it gets to the point where you have to start thinking that I mean, this is what I think, that the corporations just want to destroy our society. We've become a nuisance. I mean, what they want out of British Columbia is obviously natural gas, yeah. um, oil if there is any, uh, minerals, and water, and electricity. 
And the people who live here have just become kind of a nuisance. We stand in their way. If the people of BC could be disappeared next week, the corporations would probably be a hell of a lot happier. Enbridge could go to work immediately, build their pipeline. There'd be no opposition to the fracking. I mean, they are destroying everything. And if we can't stop them, that's exactly what they're going to do. Well, I think, I really believe that, that we're in an era where great things can happen, you know, where a new political movements can happen. Uh, there's a lot of fire in a lot of people's bellies for some for change. And if the Green Party doesn't want to give it to us, and if the NDP doesn't want to give it to us, and the Liberals obviously don't, we have to start a new movement. And I think the NDP is trying to position themselves to get in, on, on the front end of a social movement. They don't know what it's going to be yet. They could pretty well, you know, you know, uh, can develop into anything they want, basically. And uh, but I really think that. Given the results of that last election was a very, very important watershed event in British Columbia because half the people in the province rejected the process right out. And, and You mean they didn't vote? They didn't vote. And uh, the corporate media and uh, the, the, all the gurus in these parties are setting up and saying, oh, well, this and that happened in this election. And they try to ignore the fact that half the people in the province wouldn't bother going to the polls because there's no representation there. You know, sooner or later, something's got to give. And I really believe the time is rife right now. Something could happen here in the next year or so in British Columbia to get the politics moving again. Because right now, we just have this liberal NDP coalition sort of song and dance. It's kind of like a... Running the province running on behalf the province. of the corporations. And, and they really have no ideas. They just get their instructions from New York or someplace. A public relations firm writes the legislation for them. There, there's just nothing going on there. We have to change that. You know, I really think that the time is to get something different. Well, one, one thing that has to happen if we want change is we need independent media. I think the, the total loss of independent media in the country and, and the corporate takeover of the media was one of the reasons why we've lost our democracy. And because. I mean, the corporations basically control the news. They, they tell us only what they want to tell us. So here, here is an excellent, I think, example of independent media, which is Common Ground magazine. Uh, it's been around for decades and often doing great stuff. There's, there's a story in here that I, I had to, re you know, it's, it's in the, uh, I'm sure this is the October issue. It's all about uh, GMOs. There's a story where the, the fellow, his name is Dr. Thierry Vrain, V-R-A-I-N. He used to be the chief spokesman for Health Canada, whose job it was to tell Canadians how safe genetically contaminated foods were. And he did this for years. He was the chief spokesman for Health Canada telling people how safe genetically engineered foods are. Well, now he's changed, and there's a big story about him in, in this month's Common Ground, and now he's saying that GMOs are not safe and that they're dangerous. And how can it possibly be that the media of this country does not see fit to have that plastered across every <coughs> front page, leading the news on radio and on television, and and just leading Canadians in, an, in a charge to stop this crazed technology, and yet they keep it completely secret. The first I ever heard, and you know maybe it was in the media somewhere, but I never saw or heard it, the first I heard was in, uh, in Common Ground here. That's how important independent media is. And unfortunately, it's up to all of us to, one way or another, support independent media because these corporations are going to destroy us if they can. And one vitally important weapon that we have to have is media. No doubt about it. And, and, and I'm in agreement that, that the media has to become honest. But look at Health Canada, Jack. I mean, what do you think when you hear the words Health Canada? I don't feel comforted by anything they say anymore. No, you it's can't. sort of like the situation with Hydro. You, if, you, if you tell enough lies, sooner or later, you just absolutely that beat your credibility to death. And, 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 and Health Canada really 
should be disbanded. I can't see any other way of, of I can't see any way of cleaning up Health Canada. They're not answerable to anyone. They have really the most bizarre statements about health that one could ever imagine, like the GMO issues. Of course, all around the electromagnetic radiation issues. They're ridiculously, uh, they're, they're just, they, their statements just do not match science or reality. And uh, it's seemingly they can say whatever they want with impunity. There's nobody can touch them. It's, it's they just have this. Well, you can't say that nobody can touch them because one scientist, uh, Dr. Shiv Chopra, yeah. several years ago was actually fired from Health Canada because he tried to protect the health of the people yeah. of Canada. He refused to sign off on, on the documents allowing genetically contaminated foods of various kinds to move ahead. They fired him for insubordination. Canadians don't even know. He wasn't the only one. There were two or three uh, yeah. Health Canada scientists fired at about the same time. The story kept completely secret yeah. by the corporate media. This was in the time, I think, of uh, Jean Chrétien as our prime minister. Yeah. It could not have happened with the, the collaboration and collusion of the highest levels of the Liberal Party and, and the federal government, the Liberal government. How can this part, in, in this story in Common Ground, the former spokesman uh, for Health Canada s talks about Shiv Chopra. Yeah. And, and I think he says in here that he, was, he, he heard that he was offered a million dollars to to do what he had to do, and, and Chopra refused to do it. I don't know if the story is true, but that's what that's what the guy says. He talks about the companies buying our courts and buying yeah. the government. This is coming from the former scientist who was the chief spokesman, telling us how safe genetically contaminated foods are. He's now changed to a different tune, and the story is kept secret. I mean, that's why this story is so important because it shows the total corruption at the yeah. top and highest levels of our country and you know you were you were saying earlier people are chomping at the bit we want a movement well if we don't get it pretty fast yeah it's 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 well we have to kind of uh, I, there's a kind of a uh, people just don't know what to do and and they're not sure about what their rights are we haven't been really trained well to be participating in a, in a democratic way and to participate as citizens. We have to learn how to do that now. So, but it, it, things can happen, things can change. We have to identify these entities that are standing and, and blocking us. And I think the health ministries, the uh, Health Canada. The government of Canada, yeah, the government of but BC. That, the bureaucracy in the middle, Jack. Not just the elected officials, yeah, and often no, they're right. just window dressing in the big games. It's this bureaucracy that's in the middle that plows ahead with this agenda. It's uh, Health Canada is infiltra infiltrated and controlled by corporate interests. There's nothing happening with Health Canada. It's really an organization that should, should simply be shut down. And we should have a new ministry of, uh, to protect not only health but the biosphere. And I really think that we should be looking at it in a more of a general way and health should be part of, of a, an environmental ministry. And we've got to have people that are answerable to the public. You know, we have a chief medical health officer in the province of British Columbia that's appointed by the lieutenant governor. Yeah, now you've looked into that and it seems very difficult. Like who, when you say that the chief medical health officer is appointed by the lieutenant governor, it seems bizarre because that's not the way things work but well the lieutenant governor by the way has the ultimate authority to disband the, the legislature and appoint a new premier if they seem if they think it's necessary it's not just window it's not just a uh, uh, what do you call that a figurehead sort of a position uh, the lieutenant government governor represents the queen why would you have to have your medical health officer be appointed by them? Well, because they, he's an untouchable. He can say whatever the heck he wants. He comes out with the most bizarre positions on, on drugs and on, on particularly on, on uh, the smart meter radiation. He ignores the research. He ignores what uh, the World Health Organization is saying. He ignores thousands and thousands of statements from scientists. 
he ignores it all and just says, well, no, there's no evidence that it's dangerous. So, I mean, it, it, you have to get rid of guys like that. You have to get rid of those positions. They have to be ans answerable to a ministry. Somebody has to say, hey, are you abiding by the Health Act? Are you actually doing your job? And if you're not doing your job, you know, we could fire you. He, hasn't, he doesn't have that hanging over his head. He can say whatever the heck he wants. And nobody's going to fire him. Boy, how did we ever <laughs> get into such a mess? You know, I mean, Fukushima, climate change, 350,000 temporary foreign workers working in Canada while we have a 7% unemployment rate, our health care system under assault because the corporations want to privatize it, the dictator who runs this country, Stephen Harper, on the verge, or maybe he did today, agree to this European Union trade agreement that Canadians know nothing about. We have no idea what it's going to do to our country. Harper uh, is, is on the verge of making the deal. We're in a mess. And uh, the only ways out I can see really are we need media. And there's media everywhere. People just have to support it. And we need more democracy. Yeah, I go online. There's lots of great blogging. There's a lot of great media around. It's not your mass media like uh, we'd like to see it, but still, uh, more and more people are going to th those sort of sources to get their information. I do every day. So I think, you know, we can develop uh, a network of information that's truthful. But we also need television, we need newspapers, and we need radio. Yeah. We, because those things are so in your face. We, we, the, the truth has got to get out there somehow. I agree. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum, and thank you very much, Walter. Always a pleasure, Jack.